So let's do another one. And I kind of like this one. Now some of you are saying, now oh, you're a math nerd, you like them all. Not true. I like some way more than others. Um, so let's look at this one. I like this one because you get to exercise a lot of, uh, you know, it's got a lot of little parts to it, but they're, you know, but they're decent, fun, basic parts. So it's pretty obvious how you're going to split this up. So ln x is going to be one part, and x to the fifth is going to be another. So to conserve space, let's just write that over here. That's one over x to the fifth dx. Okay. So let's center that a little bit. Okay. So we want to break this up into two parts. And we want to take the derivative off of one and move it to the other. Okay, well, this one is a pretty obvious one because we don't know the antiderivative of ln of x. Um, I don't know exactly why. Um, I can't give you an explanation. But um, I just know that uh, that's not either it's not easy to do or it doesn't exist or something. However, this we know the antiderivative of. Okay, so let's go off to the side because this one is probably not altogether obvious. So you have 1 over x to the 5th, which is x to the minus 5. Okay, now if we want to take the antiderivative of that, so let me see. Um, what is the. Let me see. So the antiderivative of this, well, let's see. Let's just say anti d of x to the minus 5. Not the most mathematical terminology, but it's all I can think of right now. So you know, to get the antiderivative, you add 1 to the exponent, and that will give you minus 4. Um, also, there has to be a constant term outside. Um, so you need a constant term that when you take the derivative of this, is going to balance out the minus 4 that comes to the side. So that constant is simply 1 over minus 4. Okay, So you should see how that works. When you take the derivative of this, this minus 4 is going to cancel out with this minus 1 over 4 and that's going to give you a 1 and you subtract 1 from this exponent so that's going to give you um, x to the minus 5. Okay. Right, so uh, off to the side, we're going to put the antiderivative of x to the minus 5 is simply equal to x to the minus 4 over 4. Okay, all right, now remember, I, I can't beat this into the ground enough. You're trying to move the derivative from one part to the other, you're going to take the antiderivative of this thing and then you're going to leave it alone and put it there without the integral sign then you're going to subtract the integral and then you're going to take the derivative of the other thing okay so what the heck are you talking about well again um, remember like I said earlier in the video so when you take the antiderivative of 1 over x to the fifth um, then you get a term over here alone without the integral Alright, so that'll just be ln x times x to the minus 4 over 4. Okay, now you subtract the integral part and now you apply the derivative. So the derivative of ln of x is simply 1 over x. And now you're seeing why I like this problem because it's, it's going to balance out in the end. Multiplied by x to the minus 4 over minus 4 dx. Right. Um, so again, we put this out here. Let's make things a little neater. Um, let's see, x to the minus four times log of x minus. Okay, let's look up here. Well, first thing you should know is these two minuses cancel out to give you a plus, and x to the minus four. Oh, don't forget the integral x to the minus 4 divided by x is x to the minus 5 um, dx. Well, that's easy to solve because we wrote that up here. Okay, 
So, let's just do this first because I'm so excited about it. So, let me see. And I believe that should be a minus. We messed up there. So, uh, we just, so the antiderivative of x to the minus 5 is simply x to the minus 4 over negative 4. And then we can bring down this. Okay, also, um, if you look, you see that there are like terms on both sides. Um, I guess to make things neater, let's just make this whole thing a minus. Okay, so if you notice, there are like terms on both sides. So this looks a whole lot like this. And as a matter of fact, you can pull that out. So you get an x to the minus 4 over 4 times ln of x minus 1. And as they say on millionaire, that is the final answer. Okay, let's do one more problem. And I like this one too. Um, this one is a bit more challenging. It's got some twists in it, and you'll see why. So let's get right to business. So you're supposed to break the integrand down into two parts and move, again, move the derivative from one part to the other. So um, I had to cheat and look at the solutions because it's been a while since I've done this one. Um, I probably could have gotten it on my own. You're thinking, yeah, right. But it would have taken a lot longer. So uh, the most obvious way is to break it into ln of x times ln of x dx, um, which looks good. But, however, um, you're trying to take the derivative off of one and move it to the other. Um, so you can't take the antiderivative of ln of x. So that's not going to work. We're going to need another approach. So, um, remember we're dealing with products here. Um, so, what's another way of writing this integral? I'll give you a hint. You use the trick uh, when you're dealing with fractions and least common denominators. Right, I knew you got it. You multiply it by 1. So, let's move the integral to the side and put a 1 in there. Alright, so we're going to put a 1 there. Alright, and that's going to make things a bit easier. So our 1 is going to give us 1 part. And our ln of x squared is going to give us another part. Um, so uh, this is going to be pretty easy. So which one should I take the derivative off of?